Hello. This episode is all about poetry and science and how the arts and the non-arts relate to each other. We're speaking to Ella Frears the whole way through, who is the poet in residence for the Cassini Space Mission. That's the one orbiting Saturn. Also, at the end of the episode, we've got a little return from an old favourite of the show, Solid Bold. So you're currently poet in residence for a space mission. Yes. Can you tell me a bit more about, about that? I can. Um, so it's the Cassini spacecraft, which is the probe that orbits Saturn. Um, it's been up there for nearly 20 years. So I sort of first got into it, I started, sort of like about a year ago, I realised that um, I write a lot about sex and sexuality. Mm -hmm. um, and as a young female writer especially, um, I'm just emerging, that's a sort of dangerous thing, you can get labelled quite quickly. Um, and so I thought like I'm going to try and take myself away from the things that I normally write and try and interrogate why I write about those things. Mm -hmm. Uh, and so I contacted a load of scientists at um, Imperial. Didn't think I'd hear anything back. Just random email, just saying <laughs> like, "Hi, can I talk to you about your work?" Uh, there's quite a sort of um, high up guy in quantum mechanics mm -hmm. um, who called Ray Rivers, who's a total babe. Uh, he emailed back straight away, and we had this conversation where originally the project was going to be that I translate the equations that he was working on um, into poetry because. I was really interested in this idea that uh, maths is a language that I don't understand and quite often people feel that they don't understand poetry. Mm -hmm. um, so I was like, okay, but it turns out you need quite a lot of knowledge <laughs> to understand <laughs> equations in um, quantum mechanics. Uh, so I sort of scrapped that idea mm -hmm. and ended up meeting um, a woman called Leah who works on Cassini and talking to, with, to her about that. Um, and she... So they, they sort of they work on Cassini every day. They sort of um, check up on it, look at the data that's uh, fed back, and they're looking at the magnetic field around Saturn, um, or from Saturn. You can tell I don't know <laughs> <laughs> much about it. I'm right on the edge of learning. I'm mm -hmm. sort of not, I'm pre-research, so. Yeah. Um, but uh, anyway, so th it's scheduled to crash into Saturn, or that like it's a scheduled crash, so it, they're sending it into Saturn on the 15th of September this year. So it will have completed its mission. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of in the final year of it. Um, which is sort of a really beautiful poetic idea that it has to sort of commit suicide in a way. Yeah. Um, so I became really fascinated in that and made this project um, where it's sort of poetry about the mission, but also just about the people that I meet, the mm -hmm. scientists and the sort of difficulty I have with understanding that and the difficulty that they might have understanding why I would want to make work in the way that I do. Um, and then there'll be a sort of big funeral event at the end, which is in September. Um, which would be really fun, I think. Yeah, that's quite interesting, the idea of it, to fulfil its purpose, it has to has to mm. destroy itself. Yeah, because they think that one of the moons um, has might have life on it, or prebiotic life, um, and so you can't allow it to just sort of wander, <laughs> or sort of drift, I guess is the better word, um, because it, it has some sort of either chemical power or something that, is, that would destroy things, so it, it, ha it can't be allowed to crash wherever it would like it, it has to be sort of sent into somewhere where it won't damage anything um so yeah it's quite dramatic yeah they call it the grand finale because it goes sort of <laughs> through the rings and then sort of crashes so is it does it have cameras on is it or just like yeah sensors? so it has we, <laughs> quite hilariously it's got a one megapixel camera <laughs> it's like really shit technology <laughs> um so uh because it's been there for so long and they have to talk to it in this computer language called c which i don't i don't know anything about computer languages um, but it's like the oldest or one of the oldest ones, I think. Um, so it's really outdated and quite yeah. sweet, and it looks like a probe from the like <laughs> from a sort of old-fashioned movie. It's like very sweet. So yeah, um, that's really exciting. Mm -hmm. um, I've got a composer who's gonna um, compose a space funeral march. Oh wow! Yeah, which that's cool. really exciting. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and an architect to design the tomb. Um, so there'll be like at the event there'll be a sort of model of the tomb. Mm -hmm. And somebody else, a filmmaker, a really talented filmmaker, who's going to make a sort of um, film using old space footage. Yeah. That's a great idea. <laughs> it's going to be fun, I think. It's just like, yeah, when you're standing on the brink of a project, it's, mm. um, yeah, scary. 
one of the funniest conversations I had when I was putting together this proposal was like with two scientists where they were saying, you know, it's not a loss, it's not a death, I don't know why you would want to do a funeral, it's a success. It's a, it's, if it crashes when it's supposed to crash, then that's a success. Yeah. And I was like, well, you miss it, isn't it? Like a, a, an awful thing to lose this, sort of your eyes on Saturn to lose this thing. And they were like, no, we'll be extracting data from it for years after it's crashed, so it won't have finished. And so that's like <laughs> not what you want to hear when you've written a whole project about sort of the death of Cassini. But um, but it's also like their ideas of of beauty, mm-hmm. I think, are interesting. So I ended up talking a lot with one of the physicists about what poet a poet would consider beautiful and what a physicist might consider beautiful, um, and how those things <laughs> slightly sort of overlap and yet yeah. are different. Why why do you think people are are, are drawn to the study of of astronomy, I, it, surely there's a, 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 a seeking for the unknown that is also quite a creative pursuit in many ways. Yeah, sure. I think um, I think for many that's probably the case, the sublime and the unknown. Um, mm-hmm. I think for me it was a way of trying to take my writing out of my body. Mm-hmm. Um, and so even I, I figure that even if, if I'm still writing about sex and my body after and I'm using Cassini <laughs> as like a vehicle, then that must be what I should be writing about mm-hmm. um, because... Uh, it's about as far as I could find um, to get to get my writing to change direction, and um, and it, I'll be really interested. I mean, I haven't written anything yet, so I'll be really mm-hmm. interested to see how it shapes what I'm doing because I really don't know. I don't know anything about space, really. It's quite exciting. <laughs> <laughs> Not for the physicists I'm working with, but like <laughs> doing like basic science lessons with me, like the direction of light, and really, and I think they're those conversations are boring for them but mm. hopefully when we start to like <laughs> find uh, common interests do they seem excited by by your interests no no <laughs> <laughs> no they're really sweet um i had i met for, at the pub with a guy called Stuart the other day mm-hmm. and he uh he's really great he's got his own telescope at Royal Holloway. he teaches astronomy um but he was really so he was at first trying to be like you know if it like if if we had infrared cameras instead of eyes you know what would I look like and I was like oh I, I don't know <laughs> like really panicking <laughs> like flashbacks to science lessons um and he asked me what uh makes the wind what drives the wind on earth and I was like oh fuck, I don't know like, I, I, it's not something I've ever thought about do, I'm do, sure do it's very obvious scientists know uh, well that's what I asked so I was like <laughs> do we do we know he was like yeah yeah we know <laughs> But you didn't tell me, so it's still a mystery. Might always be. Do you feel that there is there is something to be lost in understanding everything? Um, that's a nice idea. Um, maybe. I think um, I was reading. I can't remember who it might have been. Ezra Pound's essay. I don't know. But um, I, he was saying that uh, scientists lose something in in the knowledge of of how, what how something becomes beautiful or why something mm-hmm. is beautiful, um, and that's sort of lost. Whereas it's not lost on a poet. I mean, I, I don't know, I think they probably disagree with that. I think that it's like when you, I guess when you know about music, um, less music is appealing because you know if they're doing it right or whether mm. it's sort of in tune or whatever. Um, but when you hear something that's amazing, I guess it sort of hits you more. You can understand yeah. it more, yeah. Um, what, what is the aim of poetry if the aim of science is discovery? Um, and understanding what's poetry seeking. I can only I can only speak for myself. I mean, I can't speak for all poets, but um, for me, it's sort of partly an exploration of the self, an exploration of sort of behaviour, mm-hmm. human behaviour, um, and sort of emotions, and sort of taking one emotional event and pushing it past what's true. I think is the thing that I find interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, taking my voice and then pushing it into a different area that I've sort of never been to before that's that's the purpose for me is sort of the enjoyment of, of of what I'm writing of making work and of sort of finding out stuff about myself and about the way in which I work as I go mm-hmm. um, in terms of like readers and the purpose for the readers I, I don't know I've, I've, I like reading something that is so sort of unlike me and unlike my life that it's um, surprising and interesting and new but I also like recognising myself like everyone does in, mm-hmm. like, say, a novel or a female character or a male character, you know, <laughs> <laughs> whatever. There's a star man waiting in the sky 
He'd like to come and meet us, but he thinks he'd blow our minds. There's a star man waiting in the sky. He told us not to blow it, cause he thinks it's so worthwhile. He told me, let the children boogie. Let the children boogie. Let all the children boogie.